千里之行，始于足下。A journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet. We now gather in the Tao to travel the journey together. Welcome to Tao Talks with Derek Lin, where we take a deep dive into the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. I would like to invite you to center your thoughts and direct your attention to this moment in time, to the here and now. To be fully present and mindfully aware, as we all ready ourselves for this sacred process of the Tao. So, in this table here, the top you're going to see the two paths of wisdom: Buddhism and the Tao. Now, of course, I'm not. Talking about religious Taoism now, I'm talking about the Tao because that's what we are exploring, not as a religion but as a way to live. Then, down the left-hand side, you're going to see the three levels prior to enlightenment. This is talking about the lay public, the lay person who doesn't know that much about Buddhism or the Tao, and then. The next level beyond that would be attaining enlightenment. That is being on the way, being in the process of becoming more spiritually wise. And then there's the goal. There's the aspiration of enlightenment. So there are many, many parallels between the two, and they come from the same human need to understand the world better. Prior to enlightenment in Buddhism, most people are described as zhongshen, sentient beings. They are described as mostly asleep. I put asleep in quotation marks because when sentient beings are described as asleep, it's not a literal description that people are sleeping. Everybody is sleeping for you know hours in a day. Zhongshen are quote unquote asleep. What it means is that people are unaware, as if they are sleepwalking through life. So what about the Tao? The Tao describes most people as simply that people, Zhen, and then most people. Uh, the sages recognize do not know the Tao, that they are not aware of it, or they have heard some terms but don't really know what it means. So then, what about the path leading to wisdom or leading to enlightenment? So in Buddhism, four or five. This means Buddhist Dharma. It will be the study and practice of Buddhist Dharma,、uh, teachings of the Buddha, teachings from Buddhist scripture. That's Buddhist Dharma. The parallel construct on the downside is Shou Dao, and this means to cultivate the Dao in daily life. So these are the two ways that one can go from, you know, just a sentient being that is quote unquote asleep to the state of the Buddha, or go from people who are、uh, unaware or ignorant of the Tao to someone who fully comprehends the Tao. So keep in mind that in Buddhism the metaphor is that. People are asleep, and extending from that metaphor, when they become enlightened, they wake up. The sleeper wakes up. That's the metaphor in Buddhism. Sort of like when we say,、um, "Wake up and smell the coffee." You know, sometimes you'll hear people say that to one another,、uh, and when they say "wake up," they also don't mean it literally. 
They mean that, well, you know, you are um, mistaken, you are delusional, now it's time to wake up and smell the coffee. In Buddhism, the idea is that when you uh, become awake, you gain access to the greater reality, the complete and true reality, the, the truth of the world, the truth of existence. Now in the Tao, the, the, the uh, parallel, the counterpart is Shenren, the term that we're talking about right now, the Tao sage, so the, uh, the enlightenment from the Tao context is to attain oneness, to recognize that all the different divisions of the world ultimately are rooted in the one, that there's a, there's a crystal clarity in that the confusion that most people uh, have about the Tao, it, it's like a fog that has lifted away. So your view of reality gains a kind of crystal clarity. Either way, whether you look at the Buddhism path or the Tao path, the idea is to go from lack of awareness to full awareness, to go from asleep to awakened, that's on the Buddhism side, or to go from a state of ignorance to a state of comprehension and complete oneness. So either way, the path of attaining wisdom is equivalent to the path of attaining greater reality. We're gonna go off of that. We're gonna talk about exactly how that works in the context of this chapter. So I call this slide toward greater clarity. And now the columns have changed. I've got one column, confusion, represented by the majority of the people out there. Many people are confused because of how things change back and forth. Then I have a column for the Tao, how we should approach in order to gain that clarity. So with the rows, we start out with misfortune and fortune. This is what we talked about last time. The confusion that people have is that they don't realize that the two are connected states. They don't realize that they can do a lot with it, that they can handle it in a much more skillful way. So the confusion from most people when they encounter either misfortune or good fortune is, well, you know, stuff just happens in life. What are you gonna do about it? What can you or anyone do about it? Shrug, the shrug of sort of a helpless gesture. Yeah, good things happen. Yeah, bad things happen. You know, that's it. Now, Dow cultivators should never stop at that level, but should go further and then realize that, yes, things happen in life, no doubt about it, but no matter what happens, we can always work with it. We can always work with what happens in life. Clear perception is the key. That is, when you begin to gain the clarity of the Tao, you begin, you gain the ability, you start seeing that no matter what happens, there's always the good parts, there's the bad part, and sometimes one is hidden from the other. One is just the potential that can manifest. If we don't do certain things to prevent the manifestation, it can occur. That is clear perception. So you go from confusion, which is sort of a victim mentality, things happen to me, woe is me, to the Tao, which is that, okay, so that's what's happening, now what should I do? Now what can I do to turn things around or to shape it into what I want to see in my life? So from confusion to clarity, that's how it applies to misfortune and fortune. Now let's apply it, let's apply the same idea, greater clarity to right and strange, you know, right and wrong, good and wicked, good and bad, good and evil, use whatever terminology suits you better. The confusion is something that we do see in our world, and that is the comment on the relative nature of good and bad, right and wrong, 
And the confused conclusion is there's no right or wrong, good or bad. It's all relative from a sort of a universal perspective. It's all illusory in the mind. That thinking makes it so, thinking makes it good or bad. So the issue with this mentality, which has become prevalent in the West, is that it tends to not survive contact with reality. When you are suffering physical misery, as an example, physical pain, you won't be able to convince yourself that there's no good or bad. The pain that you are suffering is very bad. No amount of philosophizing can make it go away. The rubber meets the road, philosophy encounters reality. In this case, false philosophy. The Tao is much more down to earth, much more practically minded. So for the Tao, there's definitely right and wrong, especially at the personal level. The right and wrong, you may not want to apply that to everyone else, but you need to apply your own standard of right and wrong to yourself. Indeed, it is recommended everyone should have his or her own code of honor, and everyone should live by that. So that's greater clarity, no longer confused. What's right? What's wrong? Who knows what actually you do? So now I understand that this, this concept can be rather abstract, and as you uh, as you are aware from these talks in the past, whenever we encounter abstract concepts that can be illustrated, I like to illustrate with a story. When I look at it this way, when I lay it out like this, it would seem like, what? Well, of course we want confusion to clarity. That's easy to understand. This is easy, but is it really? Is it really easy? If it was actually easy, why are we not already Buddhas or Tao sages? We're not. So question to everyone, what's holding us back? What do you think? It has come to an end, but the journey continues on. Let us all travel safely so we can meet again. Until next time, may the Tao fill you with peace and happiness.